Hello everyone, I'm back. I'm back with my panelists for the first panel discussion of the day. Uh, they will be talking more about how can corporate innovation help further and strengthen Africa's tech startup ecosystems. So today I have with me Mr. Bongani Sithole, who is the director at Founders of the Africa. We have Faraz Ahmed, who is the group CEO and co-founder of Azam Bay. We have Mohamed Nazir, who is head of corporate venture at Raya Holdings. And we have Roberto Croci, who is the managing director at Microsoft for Startups, MEA. So, uh, and we also have our host, Ajay Ramasubramaniam, who is founder and CEO at Startup Reso, who will be hosting the session. So over to you, Ajay. Thank you. Thank you, Jaguti, for the wonderful introduction. We have some echo. Uh, interesting topic, uh, something that I've been personally passionate about and that I've been doing for a few years in, in different capacities, corporate innovation. It's, it's very exciting and great that we are kicking this off with four distinct panelists. We have an accelerator operator. We have a corporate venture capitalist. We have a technology leader supporting tech startups globally, and we have an entrepreneur, if I can call Firas that, but with a solid entrepreneurial background. So welcome uh, each one of you. Before we uh, dive into the questions, it would be wonderful if we can go around the, the room, each one briefly introducing uh, yourself to the audience. If you can begin with uh, Bongani. Great, thank you very much, uh, AJ. Uh, as you said, my name is Bongani. I'm the Managing Director of Founders Factory Africa. Uh, we are a venture corporate development company uh, focusing on uh, connecting startups to corporates to enable them. Uh, what we call is um, an unfair advantage that we bring into startups to help them uh, move further faster. Thank you. Thank you, Mani. Firas? Sure. My name is Firas Ahmed. I'm the group uh, CEO of uh, Azam Pay. We are a payments and e-commerce uh, startup in based in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. Mohamed Nazir. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed Nazir. I am currently handling the corporate venture activities at Raya Holding. I'm wearing two hats, the uh, venture investments and venture partnerships, and also our in-house corporate accelerator. And uh, I'm really honored to be speaking with you in such an interesting panel today. Okay, and Roberto, if we can close it with you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, AJ. Hello, everyone. My name is Roberto. I'm the managing director for Microsoft for startups across Middle East and Africa, based here in Dubai. Uh, we focus very much on uh, um, bridging the gaps between corporates and startups. Uh, Microsoft historically has been, uh, uh, you know, developing a, a relationship with large enterprises and corporates. And recently, we launched this uh, Microsoft for Startups program across the region, Middle East and Africa. And we are building this connected ecosystem where we have uh, uh, corporates on one side and we're trying to bring innovation to them. But on, that, on, the, on the other side, one way of doing that is building this ecosystem of startups that build on Microsoft technology. And it's not only about the matching, and I am sure it will, this will be part of the conversation, but also how we can enable co-creation happening uh, between corporates and startups. Looking forward to, to the panel and great sharing this with great panelists uh, uh, as we see today. Great, wonderful. That's that's nice way to to kick off this this conversation, and it's even better that we have a, a diverse uh, set of panelists because when it comes to corporate innovation, I think it's it's fairly important that you have different stakeholders coming together. It's not just the corporate, it's not just the startup, but you need uh, several stakeholders to kind of be involved. So whether you are an operator like what Bangani does with Founders Factory Africa, whether it's it's someone like uh, Roberto from from Microsoft. I mean, the number of startups that you guys have been supporting globally. I think you need several stakeholders to, to be a part of the conversation. So with that, I would like to dive into this and, and maybe I'll, I'll go to Mohamed Nazir uh, first with, with this one, wearing dual hat of being a corporate venture capitalist and also operating accelerator within the group. So what are your thoughts on the overall or overarching corporate startup collaboration aspect, uh, whether from an Egypt perspective where you are or looking at the, the broader uh, continent aspect of it. OK, um, a few years ago, we weren't hearing, hearing a lot about uh, corporates uh, working with startups, but definitely with the uh, evolution of the startups in the region, with their innovative business models and innovative solutions, uh, they started co uh, catching the uh, corporates interest who are uh, feeling threatened uh, by the disruption of their industries. 
So we have seen uh, most recently a lot of corporates getting into this arena, uh, definitely through uh, multiple types of programs. Uh, speaking about Egypt, uh, in the last like two or three years, we have seen almost 10 or 15 programs that initiated by the corporates to work with governments, uh, sorry, with, uh, with the startups. So uh, it's eventually uh, a win-win situation as the, the startup is going to uh, work with experts, industry experts, and validate their concepts and business models. And maybe this corporate could become their first client. On the other side, the corporate is going to benefit from the uh, innovation driven into their corporate and uh, also acquiring a new market share through the new technologies. Great. I'll, I'll go to Bongali next on, on this one. You guys have been operating uh, programs, different parts of the continent under, under Founders Factory Africa. Well, how has your experience been bringing together corporates uh, in, this, in this whole conversation to further uh, the, the growth of startups or, or seeing the, the broader kind of progress of startups in the, in the region? Yeah, I think that's an interesting one, AJ. And maybe just to take a little bit of a step back, um, uh, my history is that I've, you know, I've built three uh, startups before studying, you know, Founders Factory here in Johannesburg. And part of what I've seen is a struggle of, you know, a, a startup trying to establish a B2B play and how difficult that is in Africa, right? It can take a couple of months to, to even years to be able to foster any collaboration with corporates. And I think coming into Founders Factory, the idea really was to say, how do we actually bridge the gap between um, corporates and startups with an idea of uh, enabling startups to move them further faster, right? Purely because of corporates have got a um, lot of assets. Um, of course, everyone knows that they move slow, but uh, if they can collaborate with uh, startups, they can be able to move further faster. The second th uh, thing that we actually have seen is a benefit to a corporate is essentially buying innovation forward. Right. What it means is that uh, a corporate might not necessarily have the ability to dabble into things like crypto, as an example. But then you have multiple startups that are already, you know, having a headway into that space. So bringing the two, I think, actually makes, um, uh, you know, marries, marries the, the, the two sides of the fence, thus enabling startups to actually foster and build much quicker um, so that you can reduce the, the B2B play. Um, with an enablement of, of corporate. And for corporate, they're essentially buying this innovation forward for themselves, um, you know, a, a ahead of the time. So we have found that across the markets that we're operating in, uh, it's working quite well, right? Startups are seeing a realization of quick turnaround time um, co collaborating with corporates uh, as opposed to historically trying to acquire customers one by one. Great. Uh, Roberto, just uh, going on to the points that uh, Mohamed Nazir and, and Bongani made, I mean, Microsoft for startups has, has gone through several iterations, I guess one of the first corporates to, to actually launch a program. So it's, uh, I mean, even to ask the question on your thoughts on, on corporate startup kind of collaboration is, is kind of a little bit out of place, but with the kind of iterations that Microsoft itself has, has undergone with its startup program, how, has, how have you seen this uh, evolution? when it comes to corporate startup engagement? Yeah, this is this is a great question. So uh, we, we believe that there is still uh, a lot of potential to, to develop there. Uh, first of all, um, uh, working with corporates to, the, to identify and, and refine challenges um, is our starting point, but uh, it's probably the easiest part of the whole thing, right? So, and also identifying startups that can solve for those challenges is not difficult if we, if we have a regional outlook, right? So there are great founders, great entrepreneurs and startups out there that are already solving for existing use cases or challenges. The, the hard part of the work starts when we, uh, after the match, when, when, the, when, when the actual work starts, right? So for many different reasons. So what you've seen is sometimes uh, neither uh, of the two parties have done enough to understand how to work with the other, right? So because it's different cultures, it, it's different concept of time, different uh, 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 stakeholders involved, different uh, uh, priorities, different agendas and different everything, right? So sometimes a corporate, uh, we've seen corporate saying, no, no, we have challenges, but actually the conversation across different people around the challenges still needs to happen, right? So the challenge is not there yet. Um, sometimes the startups, develop solutions that are not for the corporate itself, but for their customers, right? So, and it comes very late in the process that they learn, they, they don't have access to the data that they need to develop 
a POC a proof of concept of, or, or a solution, right? So all of these expectations should be set early on. And then it's uh, navigating the stakeholders, the sponsors, uh, is building commitment. So is, is, is the actual work is making this co-creation happen. That's, that's why we launched this program is because it's very focused on co-creation, right? So the first part, it's easy. We work with a lot of corporates and when we have a digital transformation agenda open, you have this opportunity to really understand where the corporate is really struggling, where the C-suite is looking at, A, shall we reinvent our business model? How we're looking at competition? Where digital technology can help us? How Microsoft and or other tech players can be partners to us and so on and so forth, right? So, so we see that there's an opportunity to further understand what are the common use cases that that corporate has, but the industry as a whole has, so that if we build an ecosystem of stars that solve for that, we are, we are identifying that market and then we are building the access to that market for startups, which is what they need, growth, right? And sales mm. and the corporate needs innovation. So the aim is to bridge this gap, but also to educate both startups and corporates how to co-create and work together. So definitely to your question, we see a potential because we see signals of corporates that are more open in the region to look at innovation through the lenses of startups. So they are open to build programs and to uh, work with startups. Still is not enough. Uh, this is a starting point. There needs to be a lot of empowerment, skilling, education around how to enable this co-creation happening between these two entities. Great. And and Firas, you are you kind of perfectly segue into into the point that that Robert made. I mean, you are effectively building a, a startup within a, a large corporate. So I, I'm pretty sure that uh, the Bakresa Group and and Azam as a as a company is pretty much uh, spot on with the the corporate startup collaboration. What, what are your views on, on how uh, Azam Pay itself has, has evolved within uh, a corporate which has been around for significantly long? How has this journey been for you? Uh, uh, thanks for that, AJ and uh, Roberto. Uh, definitely a good segue into some of the some of the thoughts I have. I think it's interesting, um, you know, the, the corporate startup balancing act in Africa I think is a bit unique also. I mean, Microsoft certainly is itself very technologically innovative, so it might be quicker to recognize innovation from where it comes. Whereas uh, in, in the situation in Africa, most of the corporates would be kind of um, less technically inclined, you could say, more industrial, I guess, in their nature. Uh, and that creates a lot of, um, uh, you know, it creates a real balancing act on the startup side to manage that the expectations that come with kind of an industrial business versus a technology business. So uh, it is very much a balancing act. The way I can see it, I was thinking about how to describe it. It's like a startup uh, working with a corporate is kind of like a marriage, okay? There are history on the corporate side that has to be respected, okay? And if you disrespect that history, you're gonna have fights and you're gonna have, uh, you know, not a very happy marriage. But if you work within those realities, and you respect that history, you also um, find out the areas in which you can operate. There's a lot of opportunities. And I also think the corporates bring <coughs> access to market that is very difficult for startups to achieve, particularly in an African environment where you don't have a lot of formal infrastructure in place. So the corporate brand and the corporate uh, you know, trust with consumers is very, very important. So if you can leverage those, uh, and then uh, manage the, uh, the the technology effectively. There's a there's a tremendous opportunity to create value for consumers. Great, great. Thanks, thanks all uh, four of you for for that first round of questions. I'll come with the second round to to you, Roberto, because uh, Microsoft has been running the Microsoft for Startup program uh, across across the world, and. <coughs> I'm sure there are like enough and more uh, success stories out there, success stories that uh, run into acquisitions, so multiple rounds of financing, and so on and so forth. Looking at that, and when you kind of uh, superimpose it on, on Africa's uh, tech startup ecosystem, the hubs which are kind of evolving and, and the ones that are expected to kind of uh, burst at its seams over the next few years, how, how do you see corporations supporting and accelerating the tech startup ecosystem in the continent? Yeah, uh, this is a great question, Ajay. And uh, we see we see a lot of opportunity in the continent, uh, right? So because as, as you see, Africa is, is a great example where, uh, you know, in emerging markets, sometimes uh, what we are able to do, given the, the, given the demographics, 
of the population or given the fact that digitization started uh, happening, right? So uh, uh, we, we see more corporates adopting digital COVID uh, accelerated a little bit as well, this process more out of the necessity rather than the planning strategy or thinking, but it all contributed, right? So all of these signals together, all of these elements together, sometimes you see that in the continent here, we are leapfrogging uh, some of uh, technologies that, uh, you know, in other ecosystems, they have been going through some gradual steps uh, to, to get the adoption and, and so on and so forth, right? So having young population, having technology uh, available, more available, having digitization happening uh, are huge enablers of, of this change that we see happening uh, across, across the continent, right? So, and pair that with some of fundamental issues that we see uh, acro across the whole continent, think about... Uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, issue with financial inclusion or financial literacy that we have uh, across Africa. Pair that with uh, climate change environment or the need to have sustainability in food, for example, and agriculture, where we see uh, a wealth of entrepreneurs and founders building great solutions around it, right? Or think about, again, micropayments is, is the classic example that is uh, brought on in Africa uh, when we talk about the leapfrogging, uh, some of the technology and how mobile uh, has been helping to, to uh, democratize access to, to uh, solution services and, and products. So what we see is that corporates right now are have a unique opportunity, right? So because collectively, uh, uh, they still sit on reserves of cash that are higher than the whole venture capital industry. They're, they're not deploying it probably yet, again, on an aggregated uh, level, in the way that they could when they look at innovation uh, and think about the Fortune 500 lifespan has been constantly decreasing, right? So it was 75 years, a few years back, not long time ago, 25 years, 15 years now, and it's constantly decreasing, right? So there is, there is more a necessity there to uh, look at what are the real uh, solutions, use cases, challenges that the corporates are facing and where startups can be plugged into that, whether it's for A, uh, I really have this challenge, maybe embarking in a five year long project with a system integrator with uh, a bunch of considerations around it with budgeting and, and project management and so on and so forth is not is not the most agile or smart thing to do today when you have startups that have already solved for specific uh, challenges or use cases, right? So yeah. this, this is one element. The other, the other element we see is the benefit of uh, uh, focusing on specific industries, right? So in our experience, what we have seen is uh, across the different angle of the startup ecosystem, whether it's investors, whether it's ecosystem players like accelerators, whether it's technology players that have an industry-focused approach, when, when there is this focus, there is more value that is unlocked for startups and the corporates as well indirectly, right? So when, when you have investors that really, uh, you know, focus on specific segments, when you have accelerators that gather industry mentors and expertise around a specific industry, when you have a tech player that has a lot of industry expertise to unlock uh, uh, you know, on, on specific sectors, startups can benefit of a support system around them where they can get more easily access to markets, right? So bringing corporates more and more into these conversations, into the startup ecosystem, I think is essential. Having panels like this, opening these conversations, but also educating corporates on how to further work with startups is uh, part of the mandate that we have. And where we see the value, right? So for example, I'm based here in Dubai, we have some accelerators that are focused. The one is very good, is focused on aerospace, defense, and security. And we see the quality of the startups that are coming out of that accelerator. We see the benefit of having those industry mentors, industry people that have been there in the industry for a long time, and the access to the corporates, right? Same, we have a specific accelerator in travel, uh, tourism, and hospitality, where Dubai, in this case, want to be the hub, global hub for, for this industry, right? And the same can be in Africa. We see so many activities happening around specific industries and sectors in Africa where uh, the premium of focusing on those industries at a stage where you don't have to work only on first principles, like in the very early stage when you create the startup, but once you have a product market fit done, then you need to be more specific, right? You need to unlock access to those corporates, access to those markets. You need to have the ambition of thinking export and thinking global. So the benefit of having players like Microsoft around in, in, this, in this situation is unlocking that access, unlocking access to markets, access to corporates, uh, worldwide presence, uh, partners, 
that can uh, you know help scale and grow at a stage where these startups really need that. Uh, so definitely, we see we see the ecosystem evolving in Africa. Still, we still we are we are at probably one percent of where we could be, right? So there there is still a, a need to be a lot of work to do for getting more corporates uh, on board, for getting the right stakeholders within corporates on board, for getting more commitment to enable more of this co-creation to happen. Great, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure, uh, Roberto, you, you kind of underplayed a lot of things that, that Microsoft does. I mean, whether it is the, the highway program, the 100 by 100, there are tons of programs that, that run under Microsoft for startups, providing the, the access that you spoke about, access to markets, access to corporates and partners. And yes, I think one thing that's common to all of us in this room probably would be that each one would have engaged with Microsoft for startups in, in one way or the other. I'll, I'll take the same question to, to Bongani as well, because Founders Factory Africa operates in what uh, three three locations four locations in the continent yeah um right. so yeah. yes th th thanks asia we oh. yeah we we operate um uh, in in nigeria kenya uganda um and, and south africa uh, for now but the idea is to essentially be pan african um to support startups of course and we operate in three verticals so it's health tech fintech uh, and agritech and i think a lot of what roberto said resonates quite a lot with what we do um and you know this sort of like mirroring startups and corporates uh, gives quite a lot of advantage to startups. And what I think what we have seen, as an example, uh, a lot of you know challenges in the fintech space is regulation, especially um, as a as a you know startup looking to sort of like you know provide your services cross market. Um, so you know with a backing of Standard Bank, for example, um, who's who's one of our corporate backers, you automatically have access to multiple countries uh, in Africa. And also, you have access to um, you know what regulation mean uh, for for those uh, for those markets. So it becomes much easier for a startup to essentially launch into into new market because of because of that. The second thing that we have seen, um, Netcare, um, you know, who's one of our bakers, uh, you know, it's a, it's a group of hospitals. And what we have seen, some of our startups in the health tech space, they would typically build devices, but they need validation. They need uh, access to domain expertise to be able to support them on whether they're taking the right path or not. And the mirroring again of startups and corporate helps startups to essentially move quickly because on the other side, you have what you call a big brother who's able to say to you, look, what you're doing is going in the right direction. These are the things that you need to worry about. And access to those domain expertise uh, as a startup, if you don't have access to a corporate, it's hard, right? Uh, in some instances, it can actually take you years. And we have seen that in some instances, being in you know part of our program as a health tech startup, it takes you you know sort of like six to twelve months to actually get a your you know an approval of your um, uh, of your of your hardware purely because of you've got a baking of netcare right. So so I think you know some of the stuff that Roberto said actually resonate with what we do in bringing the two and enabling them and and moving them much quicker. Some of the businesses come to us trying to build like models in the fintech space. But they don't have enough data, and Standard Bank would actually, you know, give them enough data to be able to, um, you know, to build and test our models, and they've got domain expertise to validate those models. So, you know, we take startups into a six months program, and within that space, we actually, you know, manage to do quite a lot that typically a startup would take two years to do, and we compress that outcome into six months uh, period. So, so you know, we we really believe that um, there's ability of building a tech ecosystem through corporates is actually a right um, a right move to uh, you know to to take in africa great so with that i'll, I'll move to the other half of the room and uh, i think i can see that uh, mohammed nazir oh, he's back okay so i'll i'll move to to mohammed nazir and and firas with the other half of the question uh, which is very specific to an organization uh, which is invested itself into cvc into into corporate venturing into accelerators. So, uh, uh, Nazir, uh, how have collaborations with startups and investing in startups from a RIAS perspective a, brought about a transformation within the, the parent organization that is one? And second, how has, has this kind of percolated into the startup ecosystem in Egypt, in, in your case? Okay. Um, I highly agree with uh, Roberto, what, what, what Roberto was saying. Uh, that corporates and startups complete each other. So, uh, and uh, as we currently operate in almost 12 industries, uh, we would like, we had to uh, choose our goals before dealing with startups. So we uh, decided that we're going to target startups that are in the growing to market or early growth. 
uh, stage. And the best uh, program that we can design for them in this stage is, is incubator slash accelerator. Um, we, we did have a, a lot of partners uh, working with us, uh, other accelerators and other VC funds, uh, which helped us in empowering the, the, the local ecosystem. Um, as for one instance that we uh, have developed our company internally is that we uh, had a, a company, a startup that works in artificial intelligence and automation where uh, it uh, provides an omni-channel experience for the customers. Uh, working with one of our uh, subsidiaries, uh, it's called Raya Customer Experience, which uh, offers business process outsourcing services, including call center and some other types of communication, HR management system, etc. The, the use of our company to that startup solution has increased the automation, which increased the agent's efficiency by almost 30%, lowering our costs by almost 10%. And on the other side, the startup benefit when they uh, managed to increase their traction and raise follow-on rounds uh, after working with us. So it's a win-win situation. Uh, again, uh, speaking about the verticals, each specific vertical has people who are interested in uh, working on it. Um, but there are the traditional accelerator programs who are sector agnostic that are not very interested in some niche uh, verticals. So the corporates comes in this and fill this gap by uh, working with this niche uh, uh, vertical. Um, and also it could be related to the stage, not only to the vertical. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Sam, you and, and uh, Firas, uh, while you're speaking a couple of days back at, at uh, Sahara Sparks, you very clearly articulated about the payment rails and a bunch of other things to, to kind of get the, the entire fintech ecosystem and the payment ecosystem to kind of uh, rev up in, in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. What is, uh, I mean, in, from your perspective of, of Azam Pay, uh, Azam Pay Sarafu that you're building within the organization, how has it kind of changed the, the outlook within the company? But also, how has this kind of led to more fintech innovation and uh, payments innovation around what you are building as as Rails, or what are you plugging into? So, from our side, um, the, the you know the support of a uh, uh, and Azam Pay by the group is very strategic. So, we are actually solving direct problems directly faced by the group on issues such as distribution and on payment collection. So, for example. Azam Group as a large FMCG distributes so many hundreds of millions of uh, shillings of products across the city, across the country. Uh, and a lot of that is done through distribution networks. Those distribution networks tend to be less transparent. Um, and then you run into pricing issues and the management of the pricing issues in the market. So we've essentially streamlined and made that more efficient. So we are, um, we are able through the application to control the price of the products in the market we're able to um, deliver to retail uh, shop owners directly, which was previously not possible. Um, so we've expanded access to those goods and, ser uh, and services that the group provides. So it was very strategic uh, development of our, our, our partnership with them was very strategic and our existence is in and of itself a benefit to the group in many ways. Uh, in terms of expansion of innovation, I think uh, what happens when you get, uh, you know, a good partnership with a, with a large group like that is you have the ability to really innovate uh, to the last mile um, and really find a route to market that is appropriate and effective for that market. So one of the things that I see a lot of startups do, uh, particularly in the fintech space, in, in places like Africa, is they come in, um, you know, they might have foreign venture capital behind them. And um, they don't, they struggle to get a route to the market, a product fit for the actual end consumer because they don't have that um, access. They don't have the ability to uh, get to that consumer in a way that the consumer is kind of expecting. And then also given the funding structure, the parent isn't necessarily strategically able to help them do that. So I think this is a, a big advantage of the local corporate partnerships is you, you got to know someone who knows how to get things to the people in the country. And if you do that, if you partner in that way, then the technology is simply an enabler. Uh, it, it generates, like I was saying in that talk, transparency and efficiency, and you end up doing things that they're already doing much better. So um, so I think it's, um, 
it's it, like I said, it's a balancing act. And also, I would say one thing you really need is a is a corporate partner, especially in a place like Africa, that recognizes vision and the value of that vision. So I don't think many corporates in in Africa would take the time or the effort or investment required to do what we're doing. And so I think uh, Azam and Bakresa is unique that way in uh, that their management recognizes the future and understands that you know bringing in technology at this point in Africa is the right way to go. Instead of simply, I mean, the easiest thing for a corporate to do is say it's a transportation company, just buy another truck and transport more things, right? Very simple. The ROI is very straightforward. You don't have to worry about tech. You don't have to get you know people flying in from all over the world trying to figure out how to make this thing work. It's a tried and true business model. And I think that's what most corporates lean towards. They're manufacturing, I don't know, um, water. Uh, the next investment is another water plant in another part of town. Um, so thinking, having that vision, thinking ahead and investing, these are big investments and they take a lot of um, time to kind of bear fruit. Uh, and that takes a vision and, um, and a real understanding of the market. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Firas, you couldn't have uh, kind of put it out better. I mean, being someone who's building a, a new age digital first technology company within an established uh, organization, which has the reach, which probably has the customers and, and so on and so forth. So thank you for being a case study of sorts on, on how it kind of works. I'll, I'll come to you, Bongani, with the, the next one. You've been a, a founder, a tech entrepreneur yourself, and with Founders Factory Africa and, and with with the spread that you have in the in the continent, what have you seen as a as a change uh, when it comes to the the quality of entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurship ecosystem itself uh, in this fast growing dynamic uh, ecosystem across across the continent? Yeah, I think that's a that's actually an interesting question. Um, I'm sure you know many many of our panels will you know would, would actually agree that over the last 10 to you know 15 years um you know we've seen quite a a, a growing trend uh, into this uh, you know tech ecosystem um and that is actually fueled by you know the ability for governments in some instances to be able to weigh in and, and assist the tech um, tech hubs to be able to you know uh, build schools to essentially educate um you know entrepreneurs who are willing to kind of like take on the risk of building uh, a startup in solving problems in the local markets. Um, and, and I think secondly, you know, this ability for, for corporates to open up, um, you know, the assets into, um, you know, the, the entrepreneurs has helped quite a lot. So what we are seeing as a changing uh, market over at least the last five to 10 years uh, is the fact that, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, as it were, they are looking to figure out, like, what are the ways they can be able to get better at building startups? Uh, and what are the things that actually resonate with what good looks like in the market and to be able to to educate themselves uh, in how to build good products that can be investable. And, and what we have really seen is that, you know, Africa struggles with, it's a huge geography with less, you know, uh, investable businesses as it were. And the thesis of Founders Factory really was, was to say, how do you actually go on the ground, take entrepreneurs who don't have access educate them and help them and position them so that we can increase top of the funnel of investable businesses. And we're seeing that changing quite a lot in, in various markets. And, and that is actually exciting because what that tells us is that, you know, in the next you know couple of decades, uh, would have a very matured market because companies like Founders Factory is taking an initiative to essentially take good entrepreneurs who are on, you know, on the ground who don't have access and putting them in the global stage, right? To say, how can we help you? To position you to build startups and solve problems in the local market so we are definitely seeing a huge change um, with the access that we're seeing uh corporates in, corporates opening up you know their the, uh, access and opening up you know domain expertise to essentially help entrepreneurs to focus really on how they can be able to build uh, investable businesses so the market is changing and we are really excited about the next couple of years um and 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 how africa is actually well positioned and i'll i'll end uh, with you know the results that we are starting to see uh, in Africa, you know we're starting to see you know unicorns coming coming through uh, in Africa, right? And they are growing at a rapid pace. Uh, if you look at you know 12 months ago, uh, globally we've been sitting with about 860 you know uh, unicorns ac across the globe, um, and to date 
when you look at the last 12 months, India has really doubled the, the, the number of unicorns in comparison to China. And when you now look at the trajectory that we are seeing today with, um, you know, with Africa, we are seeing a rapid grow of uh, unicorns. And that in itself is, is giving a you know, lot of confidence that the work that you know, Roberto, Ferraz and all of us that we are doing in Africa, we are starting to change the market. Uh, and you know the entrepreneurs that we are building clearly they they now today know how to build unicorns and we're very excited about that work that we are doing no well, thank you Bongani. the other day i was just joking with someone at least in the last month or couple of months uh, i think the the average seed round that startups in africa have raised like 200 million i mean whoever you look at the big round they're raising is a 200 billion so i was just joking with someone that that's <laughs> the average seed round but yeah. no it's it's absolutely i guess it's it's changing a uh, lot and it's changing uh, very fast and as you rightly put i guess if you look china india africa i guess if you're looking at next 10 years and where this market will be i think you got to be in action today and be a part of the the playing field to kind of see those results kind of pan out 10 years and 20 years from now nazir just before we started this conversation in the backstage when you're talking you're talking of the time that you've spent in the continent in egypt and other parts how have you changed this this whole uh, you've been in this role at uh, at raya for three and a half years yourself and how have you changed how have you seen this uh, this change kind of uh, take place the time that you spent in egypt and other parts when it comes to the startup ecosystem well uh, definitely it has evolved uh, dramatically we have seen uh, uh, egypt is one of the uh, the highest growing emerging markets and we're currently also operating in kenya and tanzania uh, we've seen the quality of startups and not all, on, only the quality, but also the quantity uh, increased, increasing so much in the last few years. Uh, in addition, the founders are getting more educated, like uh, they are, uh, they know what they would love to do, would like to do, and they are thinking now strategically. This is why sometimes they are the ones that approaching uh, corporates to benefit from their expertise. Um, for the ecosystem in general, we are seeing a lot of new players coming into whether they're local or, uh, or regional. Like 10 years ago, there were a, a, lot, a lot of great uh, ideas, but unfortunately they did not survive due to the lack of funding or some other resources or uh, market reach. But currently the, uh, the market is getting a lot of interest and getting a lot of other players, which one of them is uh, the corporates. Uh, as for the corporates, I, I, I highly encourage that they are they should get into this area and they should be considered as also uh, Feroz mentioned a strategic investor, not a, just a financial investor. They should target the startups that they they can create the better value for and uh, discuss potential or evaluate potential synergies. What we currently do at Troya is that we work for the startup as the beginning and we try to identify potential synergies and eventually if these synergies are uh, interesting for us we could end up investing in the startups and potentially maybe, maybe even acquire so um, speaking about the the, the the ecosystem again you need to understand your surrounding ecosystem you need to uh, understand your, your host organization needs in order to be uh, have, having the, the perfect internal alignment because not, none of these initiatives would have succeeded without working with the right stakeholders and working with the right stakeholders does not necessarily mean that you have to look, work with all of the stakeholders. Sometimes the people who are interested uh, may be working in a specific verticals or even specific industries. So uh, identifying the right strategy to work with startups is definitely uh, a must. And uh, again, uh, we've seen a lot in the last three years when it comes to the number of uh, startups and eventually number of unicorns, as Bongani said. So uh, we're very optimistic, optimistic when it comes to the future and look, look, really looking forward to uh, keep the engagement live between the corporates and the startups. Great. On, on that, with the closing note and, and on the point that you made around the future, let me go with the, the crystal gazing bowl to, to Roberto and, and Firas in terms of what are the opportunities that as, as Microsoft, Roberto, the, the opportunities that you see for corporates to, to step in, step ahead and, and support startups in the continent yeah 100 percent. so let me let me comment on quickly the, the latest uh, uh, inputs from from the other panelists so one is we need more firas case studies someone said uh, you said to firas you're a great case study we need more of this right so and this panel these conversations have the aim and the goal to to give visibility more to these stories right so this is this is amazing someone else before mentioned also confidence right so in the continent uh, i think it was bongani um, 
now the fact that the maturity has been going there a lot of things have been happening tech hubs government support and so on and so forth i i see those as uh, the pipelines right so the the operating system that needs to be there in order to so that that gives confidence so to your question ajay uh, what, what still needs to happen i i believe it's uh, build this positive reinforcement because uh, we need that energy we need that flow that other ecosystems have been able to build with time uh, it nothing happens in one day right but you mentioned india you mentioned china they have been able to invest for a long time before now you see pr the production of unicorns and india doubled the number of unicorns in the last year right fantastic amazing so africa is nothing less than that because the, you, you see again the demographics the digitization happening the fact that there are problems that we are acknowledging that there are there right so the, the, there is an opportunity for entrepreneurs to tap into these problems and build solutions for those so i would say corporates needs to jump into that because there is confidence there is energy there is flow there is positive reinforcement one uh, thing i i i would challenge though is uh, uh raising the bar when it comes to the measure of success i believe that uh building unicorns is not the goal uh, and number of startups is not a goal per se. So the goal is the value that is being created. And the value uh, comes into economic growth, into job creation, into deals closed, uh, if we're talking about B2C startups with their customers or B2C startups are reaching to, to users, right? So, but real value that is created. So uh, corporates can play a big role there because they are the vehicle of that value. They can give access to entrepreneur startups to you know to to the challenge that they have and to build more solutions right so to build and to take to market faster those solutions so what needs to happen is for corporates to embrace more of that have the humility to uh, realize that uh, they need to learn how to work with startups and same will need to happen on the other side of the fence so startups to work with corporates as we said before but the opportunity is definitely in front of in front of us in front of of uh, us in the continent so definitely, uh, we need to see more corporates uh, being very focused, uh, very humble on what the challenges they're facing and looking at startups as one of the ways uh, to build this connected ecosystem that is a win-win-win, win. <laughs> I mean, for all the stakeholders that participate in yeah. it. So because tech players will benefit, corporates and startups will benefit, government will benefit, uh, ecosystem players will benefit, right? So it's coming together with this giving attitude before taking uh, to build that abundance. And I think Bongan again mentioned this, this uh, elf in the top funnel, right? So we need that abundance as well. And corporates can play a big role in contributing to have that abundance top funnel available uh, to have more creation happening. We can close this panel with uh, closing remarks from, from Firas on, on the opportunities that you see, like even Robert to touch upon, if Azam is a, is a kind of case study of sorts, what, what opportunities do you see for corporations to step in and take ahead uh, startups in, in this continent? My take on this is I think corporates are positioned to have the greatest advantage in as technology advances in Africa, and I'll, I'll give you the reason why. If you look at the technology space, the fintech space in Africa right now, there's a lot of money being poured into it. There are a lot of unicorns being minted, but most of that is in the B2B payment space. So how do you aggregate payments? How do you get people to pay one person to another? Most African economies are basic consumption economies. So most of the transactions happening are people buying daily items, food, bread, water, uh, school paying school fees, and things like this. Right? Corporates in these countries have the, the best route to that market. So you have that top layer of B2B payment. Then you have the commerce layer, right? Which is actually where people, people are, are moving money to spend money. You know, that's primarily what they're doing. And the corporates have the access and the, the best route to that spending. How are they spending that money? Well, they're buying this, they're buying that. They're buying the things that these corporates are making. Um, and so that is the, if you look at the companies that are really, uh, you know, the massive companies out there that have figured out how to make e-commerce work, the Amazons, the Alibabas and things like that, that is the opportunity for the corporate in this part of Africa right now, okay? Uh, and I would say any corporate that is not looking at that more closely is going to lose an opportunity in the next five to 10 years. Uh, probably it'll be, it's about a 10 year window, I would say, maybe 10, 10 year window. So um, 
absolutely, it's, uh, it's an opportunity. I, I actually, in building Azam Pay as part of the Azam Group, I saw it myself as a case study. I think this can be a benchmark for the region, uh, potentially, if we're, you know, see how it goes in the next few years, how successful we are, but it could very well be. Um, and uh, I think the idea that, uh, you know, pure plays in Africa are hard um, in terms of, you know, uh, you know Rideshare is a good example. You know, Uber has, has tried, has struggled to gain profitability across the world on rideshare. But I think rideshare as a function of other things has potentially a better opportunity. So that goes across many, many verticals, many, many sectors. And and corporates in Africa are the ones that could potentially be a, a locus point for that. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for that, Firas. And thank you, panelists. I think we have gone overboard by about 10 minutes. And uh, I've been getting nudges to cut this. But thank you so much for, for your views and comments, Roberto, Nazir, uh, Bongani, and, and Firas. And I'm sure that uh, the attendees kind of really benefited and they found some good nuggets of information and insights when it comes to corporate innovation and the, the role that corporates and enterprises can play in uh, growing Africa's tech startup ecosystem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you. panelists. I hope uh, everyone enjoyed. You all can give your, uh, you can clap hands to the emojis put on the screen. So yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day, panelists. So we'll move on to the next session that is on talent capital. So let uh, give me a second, I'll be back with my panelists.